Welcome to Off the Press of the program. And we want to start by looking at the headlines of the Guardian newspaper. And the Guardian newspaper leads with Naira slums as CBN commences rate harmonization, faces supply hurdle. Page six is where details of that can be found on the Guardian newspaper. And then you have, going down a bit, you have uh, a smaller headline, DSS invites suspended EFCC chairman. <coughs> and details of that, some page three of the Guardian newspaper. INEC, LP, Beaker, over subpoena as OB tenders IREV reports. Outrage as Kano government demolishes multi-million Naira monument. FG to begin disbursement of student loans in September. Details of that is on page five. Well, that's the much I'll be taken from the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Okay, we'll move to the punch. And the punch newspaper uh, leads also with uh, currency floating. Private sector economists back CBN Naira falls to 664 Naira per dollar. The writers are CBN allows banks to sell dollar at own price, removes cap on exchange rate. Economist analysts worry over central bank capacity to stabilize exchange rate. We also have a story uh, on uh, Bauer. Tinubu suspends EFCC chair indefinitely, orders proof. Student loan disbursement begins in September. President projects 500,000 jobs with data protection law. Okay, we have other headlines. Prosecute Justice uh, Bulkachua's husband, NBA, tells federal government. And um, no division in Akerdolu's cabinet, states acting governor. Those are the headlines. Okay, just before we go, Lagos police brutalized trip lady over cultism allegation yet again. Yeah, yet again. Well, moving from the Punch newspaper, we go to leadership newspaper. And leadership newspaper is leading with DSS Quizzy suspended EFCC Chairman Bauer. You have the strip there. And uh, details of that can be found on the inside of leadership newspaper. And then you have Tinubu begins monetary policy reforms, floats Naira. Page four is where you have details of that. And then you have subsidy removal. Rep stacks FG on palliative measures. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the leadership newspaper. And so we'll move to the nation newspaper. The nation newspaper leads with CBN abolishes multiple Naira dollar exchange rates and riders are market-driven currency regime excites financial experts. Um... Don't shift blame from, for sloppy handling of your case, INEC tells LP's or B's lawyers. Outrage over death of 106 in Quara boat accident, page 6 of The Nation. Student loans, law takes off in September. And then also we have federal government, 819 billion naira extra budget littered with ghost projects. Okay, that's the much we'll be taking from the Nation newspaper, and that eventually uh, ends our. Uh, okay, that's the final newspaper we'll be taking headlines from this morning. Yes, and we have been joined by Mr. Ezekiel Anya, top public affairs analyst, who's joining us this morning from Aquaibom State. Good morning to you. You, you look in very high spirits this morning, uh, <laughs> Chief Ezekiel. Is there a particular reason? <laughs> You're trying to say something. Yes, you're trying to say <laughs> we're, something. We're I want to something. come from the horse's well, mouth. I, I, want to, I want to thank you all for the opportunity you, you gave me to lend a voice to supporting um, His Excellency um, Akpabio, who is now the, uh, the no, effectively number two man, because usually it's a number three man. But you see, when you look at the position of the vice president, the guy is a spare tire, you know? So basically, look at the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the president of the second arm. The, these are the two people in power. Judiciary, you hardly hear them. So effectively, in principles, number three man, 
but effectively number two man. I think that I owe myself and the nation the duty of um, staying as close to his ears as possible to make sure that the person I said was uncommon. I do not come to like um, apologize to Nigerians, but come and Nigerians will say, my guy, who is your next guy that you are recommending? Yeah, so uh, it's a responsibility to make sure that he lives up to the yeah, expectation yeah. of the office and not just that he's got in the office. It's important you're saying that because we, wa we wouldn't want to see a rubber stamp uh, Senate president. He's mm. already said that he won't oppose the executive yeah. with regards to bills. So we are wondering how much of an oversight uh, the House is going to play under his watch over the executive. Mm. Um, there are two things. The very first thing, if you know Akpabio very well, is an extremely ambitious person. And um, he, he has a heart. He has, he has, um, he's somebody that you cannot but respect him. Like I said, politics is like, um, many people just sit and watch the man in power. But the people who influence him, you know, let me just, um, say this very quickly. My, my friend Donald Duke, he said he was concerned about running for presidency. He knows that he would have 70% of the vote, 70% of the people like him, but there's 10% that hate him with a passion the unfortunate thing is that these 70 percent are often docile quiet and watching while that 10 percent are so vicious they are so vocal they go for what they want and they end up couching the 70 percent so we must rise as nigerians because like now if tinubu is to change a policy the beneficiaries of that policy are going to be vicious like this naira thing we can't leave Tinubu alone. We must reign behind him and stand behind him. If not so, those people that were making this money, they've gotten so much wealth that they will start to influence us. And before you know, people are starting to complain because they, can, they have the capacity to sponsor. But we need to rise up and no longer be docile, no longer be complacent, but occupy the office of the president of the citizen of Nigeria, which is the highest office of the land. So what is good, we emphasize is good and then praise him. What is bad, we don't only criticize, but we give him an option. Leaders are effectively a reflection of the society. All right. well, okay. okay, yeah, Let, let's just begin with uh, uh, the suspension of uh, the EFCC chairman. Uh, first of all, it was Emefele, the central bank governor. Uh, he's now under investigation. Now it's the EFCC, and a lot of people are saying uh, there will be a, a, a it will be a trial. We've had uh, central bank, we've had EFCC. Maybe the next person will be DSS. We don't know. And this cleansing that's been going on, what what hit you when you heard that the D, uh, the EFCC chairman has been suspended as well, just a few days after the central bank governor was suspended? um there are two answers to that question one is the honest answer the other one is the political answer which one do you want both. <laughs> we want both hello both yes we want both Did answers you yeah we want both of them both of them yeah. okay now the political answer is that there's a new czar in town who is not going to tolerate anything and the moment he feels that there's something that needs to be investigated. It must be investigated. Now, that is the political answer, and it could be right. But the honest answer to me is that this guy must have done some things before time. You go down, step on this man's toes way back, and the guy is like, wait till I come. Because the first thing I've heard concerning him, to the best of my knowledge, there will be other things I don't know, has to do with the acquisition by one of the governors of um, a $2 million uh, bribe that he demanded. And if that be the only thing, which I'm, I'm sure is not, then I would expect that um, there will be an in-house investigation first, uh, 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 on account of which he would now, with time, take the next decision. It's different from that of MFLA, where we, the whole country knew that Things were wrong. The monetary policy needed to be addressed and things like that, you know, which I think we'll go into it as uh, as we progress. So that of MFLA was um, pretty obvious. Uh, so people were not surprised. 
the that of um, EFCC chairman, uh, I think uh, there must have been some things before time. That's my personal opinion, and it's it's a function of my limited knowledge. Uh, and so I, I will not say that that's a very um, um, a correct position. But I want to believe that the political answer might be the safest answer, which is that they must have been sitting certain things that had to do with security and even the financials, because EFCC and Central Bank, there's a very big, uh, you know, co-relationship be be between them, you know, because of financial crimes. So I believe that um, he must have had certain files before he even assumed office or after winning election, you know, that period of, um, you know, between swearing in and winning election, a lot of documents start to come to you. And because he's in a hurry to hit the ground running with respect to kickstarting our economy, he wants to make sure that all institutions that have to do with the economy that have not been right, he pushes them out so that he can focus on what he needs to do. I think that might be a, 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 a more um, rational thing to think because you cannot attack monetary policy without EFCC. You can't. Another person they will look at is probably NFIU, and they will look at maybe um, ICPC. Those kind of um, th those um, those legs that have to do with monetary policy. And um, I think that if that be the route, then I drop my heart for him because it means he's visionary. He knows where he's going to. He's not just picking one person to deal with the MFLA. He's taking the holistic. Um, uh, uh, stands on which our economy rests and attacking them and if that be the case then i think i think he needs to be the is the president needs to be applauded and then supported and prayed for okay well it is possible that they may have um, looked into some things before suspending him and even if they haven't i would imagine in my opinion that that allegation from the governor is weighty enough to have him step aside for thorough investigations. I mean, we, we are in a climate where people do not resign. No matter what you do or say, or no matter what they've done or said, they do, Nigerians just do not have it as a culture to resign. In some climes, just being accused like that, mm. some public official would have resigned and just left the office. So I, 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 I think, yeah, go on. No, 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 go on. But I remember also um, a governor that was, was accused and footage was shown where he was receiving dollars. The, uh, and he stayed Putin in office in till, <laughs> till he... The, the, till difference, he the so, difference between the EFCC chairman and the governor, you know, Gandolas, is that <laughs> the, governor, <laughs> the governor had a certain level of immunity. Mm, okay. So it is now that they can bring back the evidence that they had and then deal with him. Hmm. But um, for the EFCC chairman, I really think that, um, you know, all things considered, I think that there's a certain audacity, a certain boldness that the current president is um, exhibiting. And I would say, as somebody who was not his fan, I would say this. I, I think I've always been praying that, the, you know, I've always said, which Tinubu are we meeting? The political Tinubu or the technocrat Tinubu? There are two. And I think he's trying to tell me who he is coming out as, which is the technocrat Tinubu. That and will reflect it, again on not, the appointment is, that he's going to make. Is it not but dangerous, uh, Mr. Chan? Is it not yeah, dangerous? I'm, I'm because I'm, I'm, I'm now prepared. people will seem to be afraid. Uh, if you make any move, you might be removed and, and yeah. scrutinized because everybody has one small thing or the other hiding somewhere. And if, if this is the case, that anybody who seems to be in opposition, in quote, will be removed as swiftly as that and things go against him in such a hurry, will that not be a bad thing for us? Because there, a lot of people no, will be afraid. No, 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 no. You see, let me tell you something. The moment we learn to be objective, it helps us as a nation. Now, I wasn't a fan of Mr. Tinubu. I said that again. But when you are objective, it means when you see what is good, say it is good. Nigeria is sick and tired of we set up a pro panel 
the pro panel we now have another panel that will review the, the the report of the pro panel and when that review has been made we need to bring another panel that will be able to synthesize it and give it to the president who before he takes a decision he needs to also have certain inputs at the end of the day nothing is done we've gone that route for so long and nigerians are tired tired now there's a guy that says you know what panel there's nothing wrong in you wait panel can now look into it but you wait so i think it's coming with another extreme but let us start with that extreme i'm more comfortable with that extreme you know which we need to also give him that um that support and let it be like um let let's let's get finality to it it's not enough to say he's suspended the next thing is i would have expected that a panel would have been set up immediately and if I were his advisor, I would say, let that panel have two weeks, maximum three weeks, then bring out the result. The result is that, okay, guy, what they said about you, we didn't think that there was anything. So uh, apologies, go back to your work. Or we have, have evidence against you. And not just that you are removed, but that you are sent with the weight of that evidence to the necessary prosecuting agency, which is the court of law, and we want to see people jailed. That is when people now know, ah, oh boy, this is serious. So you can have the boldness to do what you're doing if you know you are right. And on the other hand, you should also have the fear of God. You remember that thing I've always told you? I never stopped saying it that my mother used to tell me. Any child that has nothing to fear never amounts to anything. We've become a country where we are not afraid of anything. We are not afraid of the court of law. We are not afraid of government. We are not of, afraid of anything. Impunity is our number one problem. Yeah, Mr. We call Anyata. corruption number one. But corruption actually stems from that impunity that it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The Mr. moment Anyata. we know it matters, we will cool down on corruption. Yeah, what does this say about the, 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 the level of energy we need to put into the fight against corruption because the man before this particular one was also suspended for corruption for me yes for me it is a good signal if you use a sledgehammer to kill a fly do it but just don't let that fly come and perch on our food and give us this entry or something so for now no, with time, there's going to be a balancing, but let him start on that hard note. Let the, let's have a hard reset, and then we now start to balance out. Instead of wanting to make it, you know, quietly, before we know, those, those hard guys, they will take over the system. So for me, fighting corruption, I think that this man has started well. Mm -hmm. I, I commend him, and uh, I will continue to say so. All right, let's look at this issue. You touched a bit on it, which is uh, the Naira... Uh, the harmonization of the, the, the rates. Um, you touched a bit on it, but some are saying even though it's a, a good step in the right direction, it's just the first step uh, to be taken in getting the economy out of the deep hole it's been plunged in. Do you share this idea? Yeah, yeah. I, I, let me say this. I've never claimed to be an economist. I'm an architect. And at the, at the, at the risk of sounding immodest or arrogant, an acknowledged one at that. Let me not say a good one at that. Uh, because having been given the honor of being Housing Man of the Year and winning Lifetime Achievement Award in housing, I think I can say, uh, thank God. Coming back to, I'm saying that just to say I'm not an economist. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to say, I want to talk as a layman. But that layman, I, I read economics in secondary school, a good school, and I understand the concept of supply and demand. Where the supply exceeds demand, the price falls. Where the demand exceeds supply, the price rises. When Nigerians have that mentality and we talk of exchange rate, what are the factors that determine or influence exchange rate two things one are the natural forces of supply and demand and the second one is subsidy which we call government intervention when we don't have enough demand enough supply and the naira starts to like the dollar starts to go up what central bank would do is they will bring extra dollars into the system that will now make the, the, the supply 
to be either at par or higher than demand and the price is relatively stabilized. But the question is, is this a sustainable policy? On the other hand, how do you get supply of dollars into the country? And what do we need the, 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 the demand for? Our test as Nigerians does not reflect who we are as a people. If we can import to pick, we will import. If we can travel, we'll travel. And I hope that our current president, he has started on a note I didn't uh, quite like. Go to Obudukatu Ranch for your relaxation. Just go there. Come to Ibom Golf Resort in Akwaibom for a weekend. Let us learn to, you know, there was something my children did once that, I, that almost brought tears down my head, eyes. You know, usually I save money, try, try, try to let them go abroad on vacation. But this year, they said they wanted to go to Ibom. You know, some years back, they are adults now. They said they wanted to go to Ibom Golf Resort, the resort. And they went and spent two or three weeks there. The total money they spent there was less than the ticket for two people. What am I saying? If my children could prefer my state, it means that we have things in this country. Our, our test must not always be abroad, abroad, abroad. We put demand on our forex. Number two is that we are not producing anything reasonable that brings in, you know, we, which we now in export and get the dollars back. So the dollars seem to be resting on only oil, only oil. And that's not good enough. So for him to now say, look, and then the worst part was that instead of targeted subsidy, which is very important, for instance, I want agriculture to become what we need. We need equipment. Any equipment you bring down here, we will give you the exchange rate at a subsidized rate, which is subsidy. That is targeted subsidy. I now look at maybe um, uh, educational materials, which are not sourced locally. I mean, that can be sourced locally as much as it. No, equipment, largely. Even technology, uh, you know, laptops and things like that for our children. We want our children to be in tune with the current realities of times, which is ICT, and, and we are really gifted in that area. So when you have this targeted subsidy, you know, which can even supply at 50% and all that, but when you now do this, this exchange rate differential, where you, we don't know how it's being applied, we can't say anything, it's very opaque, mm -hmm. allow it to float at the market so that when you know that you need something, you've got to find out if that is absolutely needed so that all this bringing money to, to, to wage on the, Naira, on, the, on, the, on the Naira so that it will now come to balance out. I think that that policy he has taken is going to be difficult, you know, in the long, in the short term. But if Nigerians are explained to, like I've tried to do, what makes the difference and why the current decision is going to now leave our foreign reserve so that we can use it for something more productive and then come up with targeted subsidy which can be the differential that you give maybe you can do it by way of forget about foreign exchange stuff do it by way of maybe the taxes that are, are put on it or certain incentives or certain understandings with production of uh, production of tractors and things like that then you will now have an economy that the Naira, people will be willing to print their Naira because of that differential now. Before, if you brought it Naira, you bring it to central bank rate. Why would you want to do that when you can sell it at uh, open market? Now, with that abolition, people abroad can now send in their Naira through the, the yeah. banking system yeah, because they are now sure that they will get a cost-reflective rate that makes sense. Okay, uh, well, let's talk about the student loans. That, that's another thing now. It has been signed yeah. into law yeah. that student loans will be given to students. And it is supposed to kick off in September. Yet again, yeah. some people are of the school of thought that uh, these loans are coming with a baggage that Nigerians may not be able to, 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 to bear. Because they're talking about repaying these loans and they have mentioned tuition which the ASU people have come up to say that this, the, the university system as it is now doesn't have specifically tuition. So if tuition is added, then that is an extra burden. What is your own take on the student loans uh, you know, law you know, now? 
it's it's you know you know i contested for the governorship and by the way my case was dismissed um some days back on a very very sad note which oh. i will take up but that's not what we are discussing now i i the student loan was one of the packages that i had as a governor because it's absolutely important necessary as an individual a private individual i know how many indigent students i have to sponsor and um, I have a foundation, and we have so much of them. On my birthday, I had to take on a hundred of those students to sponsor, and I just keep doing things like that. So it is absolutely necessary and important, and it's a real need. I can tell you that for free. But the difference is this. I think that Mr. President horridly signed that law. It was hasty. What I would have expected him to do was to address the nation or the students, one way or the other. In fact, address the students, because you're going to come out as a president that is going to engage with differences. Of, imagine him having a kind of forum where he addresses students. I know that there's this problem. Now, we'd we'll like to give you a loan which must be repaid. But the issue is that you cannot repay when you are not working. So we are going to look at how we are going to make sure that when you take this loan and you graduate, you have something to do on the base of which you'll be able to repay so that it doesn't become a big problem. That's number one. Number two, I have been aware of this entitlement mentality occasioned by the way our governments have been in the past. I will tell you about the trader money we just collected and it went. I'll tell you about the Anchor Boa program of CBN. People just collected the money and it went. I'll tell you about so many things. So there's this tendency to think that when you collect government money, it is um, government money and you go with it. No, it's not going to be like that because it's going to be a revolving facility that must benefit others as well. And the only way that will be done is when you are able to pay it back. Now, I want to interface with you and to interface with the banks, interface. So he, he kind of sends a signal to the people to say, wow, hope is coming, loan is coming. And then, oh boy, this loan is not going to be free. Oh, it means I have to think in terms of how I will do and return it. It, 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 it gives hope and conversation. So when you eventually take up with it, it's on phases that they can understand, okay, this is the sort of people that are going, you know, the ICT people, there are people that they don't need to be employed. They can actually, based on what they have learned, they can start to make generate income because as they are applying, they are being taught on how to generate your own income and then boom. And secondly, there's a group of people who are like entrepreneurs. They are not coming out to look for job. They are coming out because of what they've studied and what they've been enhanced to do. They are coming out to do. So when you set those templates and dynamics and then departments and sections, and then the, you now actually start it off. You shouldn't talk for too long. You know, look for the low hanging groups, okay? Then start it up, even if it is five billion. I had one billion, and like, excuse me, are they serious? Even as a state government, I'm not going to start it with one billion, okay? Uh, it's something that the youth will know that, bam, you care about them. Now, do what's your statistics? What's your analysis? The one billion will affect how many people at what cost? Do you understand me? You've got to do the analysis. You can't start with one billion. So I think it's a good project. I think the president needs to get a lot of people that will come in and get a buy-in and then start to do enlightenment program. And let me say, Mr. President, this is not part of what we are discussing. I just want to make an appeal. The most important appointment you are going to make is going to be the appointment of the Director General of the National Orientation Agency. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sir, you need it like no man's business. And that's not going to be political. You are going to, if possible, set up, I don't know what sort of same template for you to bring out, that Nigerian that is loved, that is respected, that is seen to be a, you know, a, you know, objective, that, that, that really is patriotic, he cares about this country, put that person in. You need him more than the Minister of Finance because the moment Nigerians are gingered in the right direction, even wrong policies, will be made to go right. But when we are the way we are, the best of policies, there are people who are looking for how to tear it down and they will do it faster than you can imagine. All right, let's move to the Punch newspaper. And um, 
a headline that I think would interest you very much. Prosecute Justice Bak Chua's husband, NBA tells FG. Talk to us about this and how excited you are about it. Madam, off the mic. Off, <laughs> off the mic. You know, it's 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 sad. It's 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 a tragedy. You know, I just said something in person, and I do not know at what point I'll be at liberty to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I file in a petition for something so important. I make all the payments I was asked to make, all of them. And if I tell you this payment, you'll be you you will feel scandalous. Analyzed. I made all the payments. My case comes up for pre-hearing. Then the judge says, have you paid for this? Say yes. How about this? Yes. How about that? Yes. How about security deposit? Yes, we have. How much did we pay? Call the security. And he was just sat on it. And at the end of the day, he said, no, no, no. You were not supposed to pay 1 million. You were supposed to pay 11 million. And like, how? Okay, if it must be, can we go and we say, no, case dismissed. You didn't pay 11 million. You paid 1 million. He said, we were asked uh -uh. to pay 1 That's million. Serious. Case dismissed. Because of that. election petition because there were other costs. Okay, let us go and pay. No, you cannot go and pay. It's too late. Case dismissed. But put that aside. When you get certain judgments in the past, you just wonder, where is this coming from? And then this man comes to tell you, well, well, in the past, I've had to tell my wife to grant some favors, and you are beneficiaries, mm. so it's not speculative. You guys, before you are a beneficiary, it means that there was something you were not supposed to have, but you had it. Mm -hmm. And if this is how judgments come, it means that it is not just prosecute demand. No, mm. it's not. It's bigger than prosecute demand. It is how can we interrogate our judicial system such that there is justice for the common man. And not that to think that, forget, they will buy it, they will buy it. You know, we, some of us are, are in court and it is so prevalent. They'll just say that, don't waste your time. This, they will buy the thing. Don't waste your time. They will, you know, you understand. So mm -hmm. it's either you have the physical cash influence or you have that connection influence. So if you don't have the cash, you don't have the connect, the connect, where do you get justice in the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Yeah, people are I asking for all the judgments delivered by yeah, that woman in, during yeah. her time to be reviewed. Yeah. It, 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 um, it's something that, I don't know, it's, it, 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 I think it's, it's, there's something that God is doing in Nigeria. And we should wake up, not just to the news, but to the essence. We should wake up. Prosecuting one person might not be it. I expect a conversation within the NBA to say, how do we restore confidence in Nigeria and Nigerians? There should be a national discourse. This no doubt may be that catalyst that would engender that discourse i think it is it's a catalyst it's a cat you use the right word thank you it is a catalyst but let us not let it drop let's take it up civil society has engagement nba coming the judicial council coming let every national assembly come in and say what do we do to restore confidence in the judiciary for the common man yeah well unfortunately these people that should come in are the ones that were described as beneficiaries. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, we have to we have to uh, call it quits uh, at this point. But we will we will keep praying for our nation. We'll keep being positive. We'll keep uh, thinking that good can come out of even the most unlikely or from even the yeah. most most unlikely places. Would like to thank you this morning, uh, Mr. I should Ezekiel. thank you first yeah, for releasing me on time so yes. that I can board the next one. <laughs> thank you so and much for being a part of president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Well, tell him that Nigerians are watching and listening. Yeah. He should not I will tell us. him.
You should not fall out of hand. I should tell you Nigerians are watching and listening. Yes, oh. tell him that. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, yeah. Mr. Tanyo. God bless you. Thank you. And that was Mr. Ezekiel Nyaitok, public affairs analyst, uh, joining us from Akwa Ibom State. And we will take a break now. When we return, we'll be talking something else. It will be our first hot topic. Stay with us.